Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of Learning from the Masters. Well, it's a different version of Learning from the Masters. I'm going to change the formula a little bit because uh, today I don't have enough time to do a, a live stream. So I'll just record this episode and make it shorter. I'm going to just talk about one artwork and, um, and this is this one. Let's jump into it. Let me remove my face so that you can see the painting better. All right, so this work is by Joseph Wright of Derby. This is called A Philosopher Lecturing on the Orrery. If you don't know, the Orrery is this thing in the middle. This, it's a mechanical device that's um, made to replicate and model the movement of the various uh, planets of the solar system, as you can see here. So it's a big painting first. This is what um, has to be noticed. It's almost one and a half meters by two meters. It's a very, very large painting. And at the time, this type of dimensions were reserved for history painting, crowning of kings or famous battles. And uh, it was very, very uncommon to paint such a scene on such a large scale. So this is the first uh, originality of Rite of Derby. This painting is very famous and I'm sure that most of you know about it. And um, it's, it's one in a series of three famous candlelight uh, pic paintings that uh, Rite of Derby has done. So the first one is this one, Three Persons Viewing the Gladiator by Candlelight in 1765. Uh, so the second one is the Orrery. And the third, maybe the most famous, is An Experiment on a Bird in the Air Pump, 1768, which is even bigger and uh, uh, lots of cool details. I could have chosen this one, to be honest. I mean, everything is in there. All the emotions and uh, technically speaking, there's a lot to say about it in terms of composition and light sources. It's a great painting, but yeah, you know, I chose this one. Dior. Let's talk about the candlelight pictures. So where's the light source in these ones? Uh, the light source in these three paintings is hidden every time. So right here, it's hidden as well in this one, just behind this glass. It goes back all the way back to Caravaggio, of course. With this example of the Caravaggio, you can see unique light source coming from this direction. But most of the time with the Caravaggio, the light source is outside of the frame. It comes from somewhere else. We don't know if they're in a room, might come from a window. We don't know exactly where the light comes from in the Caravaggio. So in a way, Wright of Derby's paintings are closer to Georges de Latour with this example, Magdalene with the smoking flame, where this time you can clearly see the light source. This simple trick of hiding the light source behind somebody, behind some character, it works really well. And look at this young boy, he is conveniently hiding the light source with the exception of a few light rays that you can see around here just to define the shape and and make it feel a little bit more realistic that this boy is actually um, is not just a shadow but he's a real real boy it's not just a shadow it's not like Peter Pan and with the light and shadows composition of this painting, it works really well because this young boy is pretty much integrated with the shadows. Well, we could even say 
that the shadows go all the way around so it's not going to make a huge difference and it's not going to feel that he's it doesn't belong here and this little trick allows the painter to hide the light source from the viewers so it will make the rest of the colors more unified because a light source is just a color that, that's 10 steps above in terms of intensity and um, and everything has to be toned down in comparison to the the direct light source you're going to be using pure white for the light source and and the rest is going to be uh, toned down in comparison so right here we can uh, push the colors on the characters a little bit more because it doesn't have to worry about the light source making everything feel um, over over uh, exposed in a way so yeah just a little trick but in terms of composition uh, this is really really uh, something that uh, that needs to be remembered um, so what next uh, of course the shadow play um, with the the form and the shape of the orrery Dwight of Derby is really having fun with all the shadows and he is using the the scaling effects of the shadows so right here the shoulder of this man right here is here uh, lots of things the diffusion is so like the shadows the, the further you go the more diffuse it is it's important to notice that see right here it's very close so the shadow is very sharp and right here it's uh, very far so the shadow is very very blurry and the edge has to be uh, softened a lot softened a lot you have all sorts of uh, of cool play on shadows everywhere and uh, I really really I think this is why I um, I like this uh, this painting so much because well I just like this uh, this spherical shape with all the the, the circles I, I find this just genius and uh, I understand why this orrery this machine uh, captivated Dwight of Derby so much so Dwight of Derby has chosen to put science in the center of the composition but um, in a way, science is not really um, the center of of the of this painting. Even though, yes, it is the center, but you can you don't really see that much of the solar system. You don't really, if you just had this picture to understand how the solar system works, uh, you would have a hard time figuring out what is everything. Uh, maybe this is Saturn. Uh, but where's the where's the 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 sun where's the earth uh, where's the rest of the of the planets you don't it's all hidden by this young boy so there's a problem right here because i think that the main subject of the composition is not even science even though it's uh, central it's the attitude the, the various attitudes of the people uh, towards science and white of derby wants to paint these um, these attitudes these expressions of the people so we have the 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 curiosity like these kids like clearly represent curiosity well you also have like the serious uh, the serious student or the the, the scientist uh, at the time they were called philosopher uh, which was the what we would call scientist today or physicist so you have the student and the master master checking on the notes of, of his students and pointing to something on the orrery 
display on directions, looks and fingers sort of plays within this circular motion that the painting is trying to provide. And right here you have two characters that convey similar feelings. And this one might be humility, recognizing how small humans are, how we are just um, nothing in comparison to the scale of the universe. Maybe this was also um, sort of a statement of um, man is not at the center of the universe. And um, you realize that and you kind of meditate on that. Right here it's a similar feeling, maybe fear, maybe some kind of anguish in front of the infinity of, um, of the universe. And finally, you have the last character right here, which uh, conveys maybe admiration towards the, the philosopher, which is the central element. So the philosopher, the, the, the scientist, the physicist, is highlighted by the red color. It's very clearly indicated to create some sort of attraction in this direction. So you have blue and purple under this line. You have blue right here, blue right here, some sort of uh, pinkish purple, brown uh, here as well. Everything kind of melts in the background and in the shadows of the background. So I removed the red of the painting and uh, it almost feels that uh, this is a sort of a monochromatic painting almost so you can clearly see how the red is attracting the view in this in this direction as well all right so this is it for this episode of learning from the masters thank you for watching if you uh, want to support me you can subscribe and you can uh, push that like button and i see you for the next video next video is going to be um, a normal video where i talk about painting and um, yeah until then uh, have fun painting and uh, see you guys